Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. In our last couple of segments, we've been talking about earnings per share, why it's important, where it fits, and what has to be reported on the financial statements, how the rounding has to occur, whether we need two numbers or three numbers, and how we do those calculations. We've walked through steps and concepts, but we haven't really gotten into an example. The best we've done so far is calculating our weighted average shares outstanding. We finished one example of that last time, but we weren't able to go on. So what we want to do this time is jump right into a calculation of basic earnings per share. And we're going to start with JKL Corporation. So JKL reported net income of a million dollars in year two with a 40% tax rate. During the year, they reported two changes to their shares outstanding. They started with 200,000 shares outstanding. On June 1st, they issued an additional 30,000. In addition to those shares of common stock, they have 20,000 shares of 8% cumulative preferred stock, $100 par value, that have been outstanding all year. We want to determine what their basic earnings per share was. So let's jump right into this. So step number one is to calculate our preferred stock dividend. So to get that preferred stock dividend, we start with the number of shares outstanding. And this is preferred stock shares outstanding, so we can add that here, preferred stock. We're then going to multiply by the par value of that preferred stock, then by the stated percentage. Don't call it an interest rate because they're not getting interest, they're getting dividends, but there's a stated rate that they're supposed to get. And then we're going to multiply by the number of years that we owe them. So number of years owed. So this is going to be one if non-cumulative. Because all I can ever owe them is one year. It will be one plus the years missed or years in arrears is the other way to say that if it's cumulative. That's the formal equation. For our example, we have 20,000 shares outstanding. That's what we were told in the last slide. Par value was $100. Stated rate was 8%. And we don't have any information about whether they are in arrears or not. Usually, if you're in arrears, it's very clear and it tells you that. So that's what I look for, is being told that they are in arrears. Otherwise, you can just assume they're not. But it is cumulative. So we do go back and take a second and look, but I don't see that they've missed a year. Let's go ahead and multiply that out. 20,000 times 100 times 8% times 1. Our preferred stock dividend is $160,000. That's what I'm supposed to pay them each year. Now that I know that number, step two, I'm going to calculate my earnings per share numerator. And that's net income minus the preferred stock dividend. In this case, net income was given to us. It was a million dollars. Preferred stock dividend, we just calculated right up here. So my numerator will end up being $840,000. Step number three is to get my weighted average common stock shares outstanding and again i'm going to make my same table so i need a date of the change i need the number of shares the adjustments for stock splits and dividends we'll get a fraction of the year and finally our weighted average. We always start with January 1 or whatever our fiscal year start is. This company started with 200,000 shares on January 1. On June 1st, they issued another 30,000. So 200,000 plus another 30,000 gives me 230. And that's all the information that I have. There's no stock splits or stock dividends. So we don't have to worry about adjustments. I can just jump right to the fraction from January to June is five months, January, February, March, April, May, and then beginning of June. If it was end of June, it would be six. And a lot of people get stuck there. They see June and they automatically jump to 30. But this happened at the beginning of June. So it's five months from 
January 1. You notice I counted that on my fingers. I strongly recommend you do the same thing. It's much harder to mess it up if you're physically counting than if you're just trying to do it in your head. Let's see, our fraction then, 5 twelfths from January to June. June to the end of the year is 7 twelfths. You can count that if you want to. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That gives me my 12 out of 12. So I'm good. 200,000 times 5 twelfths. We'll just round to the nearest share. And 230 times 7 twelfths. 134. 167. If I add those up, I end up with my weighted average shares, 217,500. Step four is to get my earnings per share. And that's going to be the step two number divided by the step three number. So step two, 840,000. Right here, step three, 217, 500. So I end up with earnings per share, $3.86. Not a bad number for this company. Our last segment went a little long, so this one we're gonna keep a little bit shorter. We finished basic earnings per share, but we can't stop there. Remember, FASB requires that we report both basic and diluted EPS. So when we come back, we'll be talking about how we add in and account for diluted earnings per share. We'll see you then. Thanks.